Okay, so we're gonna. This is the last video for a twelve systems of many interacting objects, part B. We're just carrying on now. Um, so we saw that if you've got many objects interacting with each other, okay, then um, those first of all those internal forces cancel out. They do not change the momentum of the system. Whereas if you have an external force to the system, it changes the momentum. And then uh, what we can do is, well, let's say what we can't do um, with this equation. Let's see, uh, let me get it back. This equation here, um, this equation tells us that if we know the external forces acting on the system, then we are able to calculate the center of mass of that system. But this, this doesn't allow us to calculate the, the acceleration of all the individual particles in the system, but it allows us to calculate the acceleration of the system, of the center of mass. Okay? So here is an interesting example that they give. Imagine you had a very soft pillow, uh, even though it's called a down, down pillow with down feathers in. Okay? So it's very, very soft. And you apply an external, so there's your system, the pillow is the system, and it has a center of mass. And you apply an external force. Now how is this similar to what we've been talking about with regards to many interacting objects inside a system? Well, if you consider a pillow to be a system with many, many, many interacting atoms, okay? or many interacting feathers, okay, because it's a down pillow. Down is a, a type of feather, okay? So what happens is, you apply this force, it's not a rigid <coughs> object, like a uh, steel bar or a table, it's extremely soft, so you apply an external force there, and you see that basically this side doesn't even move, but this side gets compressed. Okay, so this is an application where you have many interacting objects, and the acceler and so what you're able to do only really is to to calculate the acceleration of the center of mass. Okay, so as you can see, you you apply a force here, and the center of mass moves. Okay. And so the acceleration of the center of mass is then equal to the external force divided by the total inertia. Okay? So you can also determine then the displacement of the center of mass simply by what? By determining the external force and the total inertia. Okay? However, if you have a rigid object, like I just mentioned, like a steel bar or a cup on your desk, or a desk, or a car, or something like that, even though every single object that exists, when you apply a force to it, it deforms slightly. Some objects are so rigid that you can, you can assume, you can assume that there is no deformation like this. Okay? So, for example, if you're pushing the back of a car, if you displace the back of a car by 10 meters, for example, you can be pretty sure that the front of the car also moves by 10 meters. Okay? So, um, this, what we're talking about here is, is, for, um, is for deformable objects. For rigid objects, we do not need to take into account any internal interactions or any differences in the displacement of various parts of the object. Okay? So, I hope this is all, um, all helping. Um, I think that's good for now. Um, a bit later, uh, I will start to do some examples and problems for chapter 8. Okay? So that's chapter 8 done. I'm going to move on to 9 in the next video. Cheers.